Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. For today's Fragrance Friday video, I'm sharing my top five favorite fragrances from Chanel. In the past, I've done a top nine list. Even that was hard to narrow down. I will link it down below in case you'd like to check it out. But these are the five fragrances that I always go back to. They are constantly in my rotation and I just consider them to be best of the best. To kick off the list, I'm starting with an unboxing. How exciting. Any guesses what fragrance is inside? Sort of funny, but there's no label anywhere on the box except for the bottom. But I picked this up last week at the boutique and I have been saving it for today's video. You can probably tell by the exterior packaging that this is one of the Les Exclusive fragrances. So I'm gonna go ahead. If you watch a lot of my videos, you probably already know which one it is. Here she is, that's right. I finally added beige to my fragrance collection. This has been a long time coming. I have loved beige ever since the first time I smelled it. And I was first introduced to this fragrance years and years ago at a fragrance training back when I was the Chanel counter manager in Nashville. So probably five years ago at this point. And I have so many little samples of beige, but I've never owned the fragrance. In fact, this is only the second Liz Exclusive fragrance that I've purchased. I'm so happy to finally be the proud owner of this fragrance. It truly is one of the best from Chanel. Ooh. I really like this box. I kind of want to hold on to it. What do you guys do with your Chanel boxes? Do you throw them away? With other fragrances, I usually just toss them, but this is more substantial. It's hard cardboard. I kind of want to hold on to it. First spray, here we go. This is going to be my fragrance of the day, so I'm just going to spray it on my arm. There we go. <laughs> Had to get it going. <sighs> wow. Oh, it's so beautiful and I don't need to spray anymore. That is powerful. Mm. It is so bright and floral and happy. This is the perfect everyday fragrance. A beautiful signature scent, but I love, love the dry down. I can't believe how powerful that is. Usually I spray a couple sprays, but no more. Oh, and I like the little magnetic cap. It's the little things, little details. I love this. I picked up the 75 milliliter. It's the 2.5 fluid ounce bottle. They also have a 6.8. It gets larger than this. This is the smallest size of the Eau de Parfum. I believe they have a Parfum version, which will come in the small bottle. A big part of the reason why I love beige, why this fragrance just captivates me, is because it is so unexpected. When you think of beige, usually, especially if you don't have the background information and you don't know about the significance of beige to the house of Chanel, you kind of think beige, boring, soft, neutral, but the fragrance itself is so bright and juicy, it's very invigorating. When you first smell the fragrance, it almost awakens you. In case you aren't already aware, beige is one of the color codes for the House of Chanel. It's white, black, red, gold, and beige, which was one of Gabrielle Chanel's favorite colors. She's famously quoted as saying, I take refuge in beige because it's natural. And she loved nature. She loved anything that was natural because it's timeless and classic. It represents beauty and simplicity. So to this day, you will find a lot of beige represented in Chanel fashion, accessories, definitely the shoes, the makeup. They have the entire Lee Beige line. It's called Lee Beige because of the significance of beige. So it only makes sense that there would also be a fragrance. Key notes include freesia, which is a fruity floral, hawthorn, which is more powdery, frangipani, which gives it that exotic bite, and honey, which has an enveloping smoothness. It's very feminine, but it's light and bright. It's floral, but it's unlike most florals that you smell, and they just kind of smell like every other floral fragrance. Something is very different. I know this is kind of funny, it probably sounds ridiculous, but I always try to envision the woman who embodies the fragrance. When I smell beige, when I think of the beige woman, she is somebody who has it all together. She's at the top of her game career-wise. She's organized. She has perfect hair. 
She never has loads of laundry piled up at home. I guess that's part of the reason why I love the fragrance so much. I aspire to be the woman who wears beige. It is not boring whatsoever. Do not let the name fool you. The second fragrance on my top five list might surprise some people because it's not one of the classics, but the reason why it's on the list is because I grab for this fragrance more often than some of my other Chanel fragrances. It's part of the Lace O collection. It's Paris Venice. I have loved this fragrance ever since it launched. It was my favorite of all of the Lace O. Now I really like Riviera. I would say that would be a close second. It's so fresh and zesty. But the reason why I love Paris Venice is the opposite reason. It's very smooth, creamy, dreamy. I think this is the perfect transition fragrance from summer to fall. I actually think this leans a little bit more fall winter. It's an eau de toilette, so I think it is daytime appropriate. It is very light and dreamy and yet it's also kind of moody and sensual at the same time. It's a funny fragrance that way. There are not many fragrances that do the same thing Paris Venice does, which is another reason why I love it. It's very versatile. This fits so many different occasions. I think this is a great first date fragrance, but it's also a great office fragrance as well. It's a perfect running errands fragrance. It suits so many different moods. It's very difficult to put Paris Venice in one box to say, this is the appropriate time to wear it. You can kind of wear it anytime. Venice was actually Gabrielle Chanel's first international trip outside of France. And when she got there, she was so inspired by all of the architecture. It had such a huge impact on Chanel fashion and fine jewelry. Key notes include neroli, vanilla, and tonka bean. So even though it is fresh and light, it has a little smooth, creamy dreaminess that makes it a little bit more sensual. I think this transitions nicely from summer to fall, but also day to evening. This could be a fragrance that you spritz on in the morning and then you might need to reapply. It's not going to last all day long because it is eau de toilette, but you could certainly wear this into the late afternoon, into the evening. And it's just beautiful. It's so sophisticated and fresh, very elegant. It's not overly floral. It's not overly sweet. There's just something really captivating about it. I think this is the type of fragrance that just smells really nice. When I wear this fragrance, I know I smell good. <laughs> and when I smell this fragrance on other people, I always think, wow, they smell really good. It's just a great fragrance. You can't go wrong with this fragrance. And I find myself picking this up a lot more than my Coco Eau de Toilette, than Chance Eau Tendre. There are other fragrances that I love from Chanel, but I grab Paris Venice more. I'm not presenting these in any particular order, but number three on the list would probably be my number one fragrance from Chanel if I had to rank them, which thank goodness I don't have to, but it is Gardenia. I have the little parfum bottle. At some point down the road, I would like to pick up the 2.5 fluid ounce bottle, like the beige I just purchased, because I don't use the parfum that often and I don't want to use this that often because this was the fragrance that I wore on my wedding day. And I know it might sound kind of silly, but I just feel very nostalgic about this particular bottle. So I want to keep it somewhere really safe. And I never like to use it because I don't know why. I just want to save it. It is such a beautiful fragrance and you can't miss it. So it is a little bit less convenient. I would like to have the Eau de Parfum. That way I can spray it on with the band in. But Gardenia is so beautiful because it truly smells like a fresh bouquet. It is the most beautiful floral fragrance I have ever smelled. If you love florals, if you like white florals, you will love Gardenia. That feeling you get when you stick your nose right in a bouquet, that is what Gardenia smells like. It's very bridal, simple, understated. If I'm just judging the fragrance on its own, I think it is one of the most beautiful fragrances of all time. It's one of the most beautiful fragrances I've ever smelled. And definitely in the land of Chanel fragrances, this has to be number one. For me, it is the number one fragrance from Chanel. Number four is Coco Mademoiselle. This is the Eau de Parfum. I also have the brand new Lo Prive. This is the bedtime fragrance. This is the newest interpretation. I love it. I did not know I needed a bedtime perfume until this launched and I can't get enough. I love to spray this every single night. It just 
relaxes you, it puts you in a nice sensual evening bedtime mood. This is beautiful. I also really like the intense version. I don't really spray this one that often because this bottle is pretty old and I'm kind of waiting for this to finish before I pick up the intense. So I probably shouldn't wait. It's a little bit deeper, a little bit heavier. It's just an intense version of the Coco Mademoiselle. Key notes include bergamot, mandarin, jasmine, rose, base notes of Indian patchouli, vetiver, bourbon vanilla, white musk, and tonka bean. It's hard to believe, but Coco Mademoiselle was first introduced back in 2001, nearly 20 years ago, but I swear this fragrance is still so modern. It is very now one of the most popular, if not the most popular fragrance from Chanel. Of course, it's going to be more popular than the Lays Exclusive line because it's widely available. But I want to say this has surpassed Chanel Number no. 5 as being a top seller. And it makes sense. I mean, Chanel Number no. 5 is Chanel. It is classic. That is the go-to. But there aren't a lot of young people purchasing that fragrance. I think Coco Mademoiselle actually has mass appeal still to this day. I haven't met very many people who do not like Coco Mademoiselle. I think the one complaint about it is that everybody wears it and I don't want to smell like everybody else. Other than that, the fragrance itself is beloved. Sadly, because this is an older bottle, I don't grab this that often, which is part of the reason why I was so excited when they launched this version, the Low Privé. This is very light and it is intended to be light. It's not really intended to be worn outside the house. It is truly a fragrance before bed, but I love it. And if you wanted to wear it out during the day, you absolutely could. And if you wanted to layer this on top of a body lotion, something like that, it would help to amplify the fragrance a little bit more. I love the frosted bottle, the clear cap. I love the intense version that is still relatively recent. I hope they continue to expand Coco Mademoiselle. I don't think they're done. We still need more. Rounding out our list coming in at number five, and this is a very tough decision, is Coco Noir. And there are several other contenders that could have easily been added to this list. The original Chance, Allure Sensuelle, Chance Tendre. I have so many favorites from Chanel, but when I think of those fragrances that truly stand out over time, the fragrances that I want to wear now, Coco Noir has to be on the list. I love this fragrance and I think this is like Coco Mademoiselle. It's one of the fragrances from Chanel that is still very modern. I think this has trendy appeal. Coco Noir is one of the few perfumes from Chanel that is almost unisex. It has that spiciness. It could be a men's cologne. And I think a lot of people are drawn in by that. A lot of men appreciate that about this fragrance. It has key notes of grapefruit and bergamot, rose and jasmine, Indonesian patchouli, and sandalwood. This is another one. It's an older bottle, so I am not going to spray this one but I love Coco Noir. I really need to invest in a new bottle because I miss wearing it. I go to wear it and then I remember, oh yeah, this one is old. This is probably seven years old at this point. It still has a little bit left. I love Coco Noir for date nights, special occasions. I think it is perfect for fall, winter. I don't really grab this for spring, summer. It's a little bit too heavy. It's very spicy. It's very sexy. I think this would be a perfect black tie affair type of fragrance. You know, if you have a very special occasion coming up, this would be beautiful. It's a little bit moody. I love the black bottle. It is so sleek and chic. Beautiful to display. Just a classic fragrance. Hands down, one of the best from Chanel and just one of the best in general. That completes my very short list. I'm so tempted to add honorable mentions, but I'm not even going to jump down that rabbit hole. There are so many great fragrances from Chanel. These are the five that I grab and I wear the most now. I think they have mass appeal. They're still really popular, really trendy, really modern. So I highly recommend them. And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I want to hear from you guys. Share your top five list, share your favorites. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned, everything on my face down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.